Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today I would like to color out of this Flower Mandalas book. It is a Creative Haven book and I thought we could color a mandala for Mandala Mania 2019. And I thought we would color this picture. I already recorded a like two hour video on coloring this one and it turned out so pretty. It was like three different parts because Bella started barking twice and I had to pause the video and start a new one. And I was going to have to, you know, piece together the three pieces. The first two parts were on my phone, but the last one, which of course was the longest one, about an hour long, is not there. I don't know what happened to it. And of course, with a color and chat, it's, you know, not something that you can just redo. So I am going to color a new picture out of here. There's two hours of my life I can't get back. <laughs> So I thought we could color these pansies together and just chat some more. Don't remember what I all chatted about, but uh, we'll uh, find something to talk about. Here is my handy dandy color chart. I today wanted to color with the uh, Spectrum Noir Colorista markers. And these are were developed and created just for us colorists. I wish they would come out with some additional colors though because it's a little limited in some of the colors. But they have two fine nibs on these markers. Rather than your chisel nib, they have a, a fine nib and then they have an extra fine nib on the other end. It is not like your typical fine liners, you know, where it's really teeny, but it is a little bit smaller than the other end. So getting into the more detailed areas, um, you can use that end. So we are going to use these today. Let me get those over there. So let's see what colors we want to use. Now, pansies, I'm going to make these a purple color. And if I remember right, we have lighter around the outside, deeper here, and then yellow on the inside. So I am going to pick out, I think we'll go with this sorbet color, and then the purple as the deep color. What yellow should we use? We'll use sunshine. Okay, where is my sunshine? Here we go. And sorbet and purple. And let's see, that's blossom. We don't want that. Sorbet and purple. Here we go. And then we will add in some greenery later. But let's start on just the yellows and the purples in the pansies. We'll zoom you in a little. Alrighty, now we'll get started again. It always looks, you know, when I'm watching my iPad, it, it's counting. You know, I can see how long the video is. The red light is on, so I know it's recording. So I have no idea what happens to these videos. It has happened to me a couple of times in the past, and it's just very, very irritating. And a few choice words were said. <laughs> we won't repeat them here. Uh, yeah, okay. So we will get started again. This is... Got to see if I got the, oh, this is the wrong one. This is not sunshine. Started with an S. Oh, let's get the right one here. Is that what it was called, sunshine? Yeah. Okay. Well, here it is. So, one pansy is going to have a darker interior than the others, but that's okay. 
All righty, let's get going again. Ah, that's better. And we will just color all of these yellows in. Is anybody else joining in on the Mandala Mania? And if so, what are you coloring? Does anybody else have this book? I think there are some beautiful flower pictures in here. I like coloring flowers anyhow, so. And I love mandalas, so this is the best of both worlds. All right, let's go in. I'm going to use a little bit bigger tip on these now. We will do, well, let's do the dark purple interiors first. And I think I can still use the, well, let's use the finer nib. Oh, some of these covers are on so tight. Now, I know a lot of you like the markers where the cap, where am I at? The cap fits on the end, and these markers, they do uh, fit on the, okay, Lisa, let's get this right there. Um, they do fit on the end of the markers. I still have a tendency of just holding it in my, God, I can't get on camera now. When I'm zoomed in, I have a hard time <laughs> figuring out where I'm at. I have a tendency of just holding it in my index finger like this in my left hand while I'm coloring. I don't know why. I just do. So let's start with the dark purple interior part of the flower. I love pansies. I think they're so pretty. The last picture I did um, had more of a design around and then some, I don't know what type, you know, if there was really even a specific type of flower on that, but made those flowers shades of blue. So we will do these as purple pansies. And so I don't have to be shifting this book around. We will go ahead and do the exterior of this flower at the same time. Now this doesn't look quite as... quite the same as on my color chart. It is more pink. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering what that sound was behind me. Bella's laying here and Misty, and they're both kind of stretched out sleeping. And I hear snoring back there, and I'm like, I thought it was Bella. No, it's Misty. She's just snoring away over here. Never heard a cat snore as much as that cat does. It's kind of funny. She's a strange one. Speaking of Misty, and I had asked this in the video that is no longer. Um, <laughs> those of you with cats, uh, wow. Um, do you ever... <laughs> Have you ever experienced where, what Misty will do sometimes, and she does this quite often, if I am standing outside the door going into the garage, um, she will be on the inside and she will turn around and she will take her hind leg and she will, I don't even know how to describe it, she will bang it on the door really fast and I call her Thumper because it reminds me of when Thumper gets twitter pated in the Bambi movie <laughs> and yeah I mean it's just it's the craziest thing and occasionally she will do it when um, I am diamond painting in the living room 
and she will come over by me and she will do that against the wall by the windows. And it's like, what in the world? The only thing I can think of is she's wanting my attention. And that's why she, <laughs> why she is doing that. But it's just the craziest thing to watch or hear. It's like, Misty, stop it. She, like I said, she's a strange one. She's the one that chews my cords. So I always have to either put like my mic cord away every time or yeah, she, because it's this type of rubbery type of cords that she really loves. Like uh, charging cords for my phone. Yeah, can't leave them out either. But I did get smart and Yes, it does occasionally happen. <laughs> I now buy the uh, braided cords, and they're not rubber type of plastic. They're more of a kind of a material, but yet a harder material kind. And she doesn't chew on that. So, so I always make sure to get those types of charging cords. But, I mean, she'll go around and she will chew on lamp cords and uh, my computer charging cord. And she even chewed up my, I have a Kirby vacuum. And, yes, she chewed up the Kirby vacuum uh, power cord. And, thank heavens, Bob was able to fix that and wrap it good with electrical tape and whatnot so it's not a hazard but oh she has chewed through so many of my cords so now like the lamp cords things like that we put wire loom on everything and that keeps her from chewing on them but still it's a pain to have to put this wire loom on everything because then of course it makes your cords that much bigger and if you're not familiar with what wire loom is he actually goes down and buys it from the automotive place here in town because it is actually made to put um well like put electrical where am I at here um, electrical wiring, like for cars and stuff, together to fit, like, under the hood better or, you know, things like that. And so he goes and picks that up by the foot. You can buy it. So he'll go down and get, you know, 5 feet or 10 feet or whatever of it. doesn't cost much. And it's got a slice down the middle of it so that you can kind of pry it open and put the cords in and so yeah we have a wire loom on just about everything around here if you don't want it chewed by a cat you put wire loom on it i tell ya but she is my most cuddliest most lovable snuggliest cat out of all of them and She's lucky she is. No, I'm just kidding. She, uh, her and Jaden, I think I mentioned this in other videos, just, I mean, they are the best of buddies. And I did make a diamond painting of Misty because for Jaden to hang up in his room, he has some anger management issues. And I think I had mentioned this in another video, too. And when he gets real upset, Misty actually helps to calm him down. Because he loves her so much. And as soon as Jaden gets here every day after school, the first thing she does after he gets on the couch, and he doesn't even have to call her. 
she will just zoom over to him and cuddle up with him on the couch. It is just adorable. Or if she is not in the living room, all he has to do is go, meow. And wherever she is in the house, she comes running. It's like, my Jaden is here. My Jaden is here. And yeah, she then will go run and jump up on the couch next to him and plop in his lap and just wait for him to pet her. It is, like I said, it is just adorable. They love each other. So, yeah, I did a custom diamond painting for him and uh, wanted him to have it to hang in his room at home so that if he gets upset, he can go down and talk to Misty. I know it's not quite the same thing as having her around, but figured it would maybe help a little. So yeah, she, she's quite the character. They all have their own personalities, don't they? Every single one of my cats has a different personality. Callie is definitely my shyest cat. She would jump and get scared of her own shadow, I think. <laughs> she just, oh my heavens, she hears a loud noise and she is just scooting with almost her belly dragging the floor because she scrunched down so low. <laughs> oh, yeah, any loud sound or like when Maddie's here, of course, Maddie being a two-year-old is quite loud and rambunctious, and so she hides all day. She usually is sleeping on one of the dining room chairs that are, you know, tucked up under the table, so she'll... She'll lay on one of those chairs a lot of the day. And Maddie will still discover her sometimes. <laughs> and Callie's like, oh, gee, she found me. Thought I hid good enough. But Maddie's pretty good with her. If she uh, gets a little too rambunctious around her or... Callie doesn't like how she's trying to pet her or something, she may hiss at her. And I try to explain to Maddie that when Kitty hisses like that, that means that they're upset or they're scared. And I don't want her to get scratched or bitten or... I don't think Callie would bite, but... When a cat hisses like that, it means go away. Go away. So, yeah. And she always, <laughs> when, when Misty's in my lap or even Bella is in my lap, she, for some reason, wants to cover them up with a little mini mouse blankie that I bought her when she was first born. And yeah, she's gotta bring that blanket over and cover them up. And I'm like, no, she doesn't like that. But Bella will sit there and actually let Maddie do it to the point where all you see sticking out is Bella's nose and her little beady brown eyes sticking out of the blanket. <laughs> Oh, I, I got to get a picture of it sometime. It is so hilarious. And yeah, Belle will just sit on my lap and let her do it. It is so cute. Bella is very protective over Maddie, and I think that's why Bella goes after the cats sometimes and barks like crazy at them, because if Maddie gets too close to the cats or vice versa, Bella gets upset. And so I think she is thinking she's protecting Maddie from the cats. And while that is an adorable thought, 
it is very annoying. So, yeah, I wish she wouldn't do that. But what are you going to do, right? It is what it is, and you just try to keep it from escalating. Bella and Midnight do not get along at all. And for the most part, they just kind of avoid each other. But there are times and Bella will get a scratch on the nose or something from Midnight and you would think she would learn. No, she doesn't learn. I like how this is turning out, but I do wish this pink was more of a lavender color. That's what I thought it was going to be. So that's why I say I wish they would come out with more colors because it's kind of a limited color palette. I will link this book and these markers down below in case you do want to check them out. I think the coloristas, if I remember right, come in like sets of five or six. I'll have to go and check. And then I can link them down if, like I said, you wanted to try them out. They are really nice alcohol markers, and like I said, they are geared towards us colorists, which is why they're called colorista markers. Hmm, think that's part of it? I think so. Okay, on to the next flower. So how is everybody doing? Seems like I asked this in my previous video not too long ago. It is a Saturday here. When I am recording this, I'm not quite sure when I will be publishing it out on YouTube. Because if this is a longer color and chat like the last one, those do take a little bit, just a tad a bit longer to get in the editor and edit and save and then get it into YouTube and upload it, publish it out to YouTube. So that's a few hours all on its own. So. <laughs> But anyways, what else did I talk about now in the missing video? Bob and I went out to eat last night. We used to always go out to eat on Fridays. And then it, um, I would get, now for the longest time, I had Jaden after school on Fridays. So then we didn't. We used to take him along and go out to eat, but some of his anger management issues, he gets upset at times very easily. And uh, he has ADHD issues in addition. And so we opted not to do that anymore. But as of this week, I no longer have them on Fridays. Maddie goes to Grandma Mickey's, the other grandma, on Fridays. So I have her Monday through Thursday, and then she goes by her other grandma's on Friday. So now Jaden goes there after school, too. So now, Bob and I can go out to eat on Fridays again. <laughs> so we went to a place we hadn't been to in a while in Wassa here. It's called Jenny's, and it's a family restaurant. So they have all this homemade, nummy food at really good prices. <laughs> And, of course, there's always more than you can eat in one sitting. And especially with Bob and I now, 
with me having had the um, gastric bypass surgery a number of years ago and now Bob with his uh, let's see I'm not going to be able to get close enough over here I don't think I'm hitting my let's see where am I at okay I'm over here I'm having a really hard time today especially when I'm zoomed in more yeah I don't think I'm going to be able to get on this side where am I at yeah, I think I'm just going to turn the book on the side because, yeah, I'm having a... My book is ending up hitting over on the side where my iPad is, so I can't move it over far enough. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. And Bob and I both ended up getting the same thing. Um, he had never tried it, and I had it once before, and it is a steak quesadilla. And they are so huge. And Bob, since his esophageal cancer surgery, where they had to remove his esophagus and part of his stomach, and then they somehow, I don't know how they do this, but they pull up some of his stomach and make a new esophagus of sorts out of it. Like I said, I just, I cannot imagine how that's done, but so now he can't eat nearly what he used to eat either. So we both have doggy bags now every time we go out to eat, but makes a great lunch the next day. <laughs> so it all works out. He was used to eating a lot. You know, he could sit down and eat quite a bit at one time. And I think the thing that bothers him the most out of it all is the fact that he can no longer drink coffee with his meals because it just fills him up right away. And then once he gets full to a, you know, it just hits a certain point. And he can feel that in his throat then, because of course he doesn't really have a true esophagus anymore with that little valve down below that kind of keeps our stomach contents from coming up. I know that sounds gross, sorry. <laughs> so, you know, he once he can feel that he's getting full, he knows he has to stop. And because of not having that valve, he can no longer lay flat, especially after eating. But sleeping and everything, he has to sleep up on an incline now, at least a 30 degree incline. So it's really been some big adjustments for him. I, in one of my colorant chats, I pretty much explained what he has all been through this past year. He's been through hell and back. Went through all his chemo and radiation last summer. and You can imagine having that done, the radiation on your throat. It made his whole throat like raw hamburger. And throughout this whole process, of course, he couldn't eat anything. So we had a feeding tube, and I would get out his formula every night for him and help set that all up for him. And Okay, how are we looking? Oh, I kind of like them, huh? Okay, I think to keep it a little cohesive, we will put the yellow in the center here, and we will, again, use these same colors in the middle little design and I am off camera yet again. Boy, figures, when I recorded the first one that disappeared on me, I stayed on camera just fine. I know you don't believe me, do you? But it is true and now I'm having such a problem. Oh, this ain't gonna work out well, is it? I got two there, hmm. 
Maybe we'll add the yellow in there then. So let's put the cap back on this one. Do a light here and then we'll we'll just add in a pop of yellow there too. That was the wrong one, wasn't it? Jeez. Oh well. <laughs> it's the way it is now. No takesies backsies. Okay. There. Good enough, huh? Now, what do you think all of these flowers in through here are? Initially, when I looked at this, I thought it was all um, leaves and stuff, but now that I look at it, I don't think so. So, hmm, what should we do with that? How about if we go with shades of blue, kind of like I did in the last picture. Oh, take a drink. And in the last picture, and it looked pretty, I went with the denim and the cobalt. And then in the background, I went with the periwinkle. So I think I'm going to do the same thing. So let's get out the denim and the cobalt. Here's the cobalt. And what the heck? Oh, I think I put the caps on the wrong. Yep. It said cobalt for two different markers. And I'm like, what in the world? I got cobalt and the <laughs> denim caps mixed up on the ends. I'm like, what in the world? I was confused. I'm like, did I get two markers the same in this set or what? I'm like, no, nah, duh. All right. So this is the lighter blue. I really do love coloring with alcohol markers and I can't remember if I had mentioned this in the previous color in chat I believe so um, that you know alcohol markers just color so smoothly versus I think I'm gonna color this all in white too you know, versus the water-based markers, I just, I have such a hard time with water-based markers. Let's do this one dark, too. And around the outside. Um, I, I get streaks all the time with my water-based markers and I just you know it I guess it is what it is it's kind of the nature of the beast right that that is what happens with water-based markers there's just no getting away from it um the exception to that and Anne our marker queen <laughs> who colors a lot with alcohol markers. We all know this. For the very few of you out there that don't know Anne, she's from A Colorful Life, and I know a lot of you subscribers of mine actually came over from her channel when she so nicely gave a few of us new color tours a shout out on her channel and uh, many of you very nicely came over and subscribed to me so you are all familiar with miss ann but she did a test and I have a video out there where I tested this also. She did a test with two different clear gessos on um, in two different Creative Haven books and uh, found that she liked 
really liked one over the other. And what she did with um, the water-based markers and blending the two markers together was just unreal. I know she put up a video not too long ago where she was continuing to work on the picture that she had done this initial testing with. And it is turning out so pretty. She uh, is able to bend. I'm not sure which. Oh, I think she was using the Tombow markers, which if you have them, you know that they typically do not blend together very nicely on um, Creative Haven paper or um, Amazon paper, uh, uh used to be create space whatever you want to call it now the creative haven paper like this is you know much nicer than it's it's heavier duty than the amazon paper you know the amazon paper is the thinnest <laughs> crappiest of them all but i suppose if they upgrade their paper they would have to sell the books for a little bit more and who knows how much more so to keep costs down I guess that is what they do but yeah if you have I have a video out there also um, where I compare seven different clear gessos with six different color mediums and Anne did a test with two clear gessos and a few different color mediums too and we both pretty much came to the same conclusion that alcohol markers do not work on gesso at all they will blend nicely, but because it's on that slick surface of the gesso, it creates, I don't know how to describe it, it creates kind of like lines in it because it, it moves the ink of the alcohol marker around. So while it did blend nicely with the two greens that I had picked out, it... Uh, it's like it almost melted the gesso or something. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Again, you can go back and look at that video. But yeah, alcohol markers definitely do not work on gesso. <laughs> but the all the watercolor mediums work just fantastic, including water-based markers. They blend together just gorgeously. As well as I also tested out uh, Prismacolor pencils. That did not work too well. And I did have a suggestion from a subscriber that maybe you should have used a blender of some sort with the uh, Prismacolor pencil because the pencil did not work good on any of the gessos. Whoops, let's get this too. Um, it was very grainy looking. You could see a lot of the white um, on the page, even with hard pressure when I tried to create the blend. And so I thought, you know, that's a good idea. I should try a blender with that and see if that would blend out that colored pencil better. And so I tried a number of different blending mediums that I have. I tried the Prismacolor Blender Pencil. I tried Gamsel. I tried the Dove Blender. I tried the, what was the name of that other one now? It is an actual blender for colored pencil. See, I think it starts with an L. I can't really remember. Um, but none of it worked at all on the colored pencils. So, yeah, that kind of nixed that. 
I think we're gonna color these blue also because there's a lot of purple and pink in here. So let's go, should we go with dark down there and light up here? Which one is my lighter one? Hmm, denim or cobalt, I can't remember. Denim is the lighter one. Maybe we'll do the lighter up here and darker down there because that's kind of what uh, flowers kind of look like. So we'll start with the dark, the cobalt. This does not look like the dark. Thought I just looked it up and cobalt was the darker one, wasn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, it definitely isn't. So I'm just going to go over the top. Maybe I got both caps wrong. I think I'm going to switch these around because, yeah, that definitely is not darker. So I am going to quickly flip these around. Quit rolling away, marker. Okay, got that one right. And that one right. Okay. So denim and cobalt. Because the caps themselves look pretty much the same. <laughs> you cannot tell the difference from the cap from looking at the caps at all. So let's check out to see if I have them correct now with cobalt being the darker one. Yes, okay. All right. And let's see how this is going to look with the lighter blue out here. And they are very close blues, but I like the look of them two together. Just a little bit of a contrast of color. Okay, how does that look? I wonder what we should put the tips of these in. Maybe I'll just add a pop of yellow to the end of those because it's against the black background. So I think that would be kind of pretty. So maybe I'll get the yellow out. Nah, I'll do that all later. I was going to say as long as I was over there, I would do it, but... And I have three markers open. <laughs> this marker actually seems to be drying out a little bit. Hmm. May have to add some alcohol to it because I know I did not use it enough to be running out. So I'll just get out my handy dandy rubbing alcohol and I use the higher percentage alcohol than, what is it, 93%? A little bit better for adding some alcohol to your markers. Although the, the regular kind works too. Well, I hope I have enough of this blue to get around. Hmm. Not having that problem with any of the other ones. The other ones are all really juicy yet. So. Strange. Unless it's something in the dye of this particular color. I don't know. See if I can shake it down. wonder if the other end would work a little bit better. Let's try that. Maybe there's more ink on this end, huh? There is. <laughs> uh, and I store these horizontally. Oh, and I'm coloring it wrong. Oh, Lisa. Well, this one will be different. <laughs> Always got to have something that's different. 
Now, if I would show this picture to anybody, they would never notice, right? I would be the only one that would know it. Oh, it's and I'm doing it again. Jeez Louise. So yeah, with Bob and I going out to eat last night for supper tonight, I want to use up the rest of that ham. I got a honey spiral ham for Christmas. And I used up some for a big batch of, or in a big batch of split pea soup that I made in the crock pot. It was so good. So tonight I am going to make up a big batch of scalloped potatoes and ham. Oh, I love them, but kind of a pain to make, you know, peeling all the potatoes. And of course I don't slice all the potatoes by hand. I get out my handy dandy food processor and look at these split, they're all sliced. So at least I don't have to do that. I'm gonna have to turn this a little bit because I am, let's turn it this way. I'm hitting where my iPad is over here. And so I can only push the, the uh, book so far over to the side. So well, yeah, I'll have to start these scalloped potatoes in a little bit. I thought I would have plenty of time to get my next video made before I had to start doing that. And I have a diamond unboxing. I have three diamond paintings to unbox. And now I won't be getting to that. <laughs> mm. Makes me mad. And that picture turned out so pretty. Okay, I am just going to quick go around and put these yellow dots in. I know I'm not on screen, but rather than flipping this book all around for it, there. Oh, you got to see my arm. Ooh, <laughs> sorry about that. get a drink okay let's get some greens out I'm not sure what we should do with these little twirlies in here these I oh there's a pink I missed huh um I know what I want to do for the leaves or the vines or there's another one I missed um you know those definitely all be green but what are these <laughs> if they're anything um i think i'm going to make them green also just so we have more green in here and i think for the viney parts i'm going to go with a darker green so how about a forest green and then with that Maybe we can, I think I'm gonna pull out three different greens just in case I need them. So I think I'll go with this forest green and then the leaf green. And then I think this Caribbean because the Caribbean is almost more greenish than it is bluish. I mean, it goes real well with the cyan and that's why I think I put them two together. But I'm gonna pull those three greens. Let me get these up here out of the way. So, we want Caribbean and Cerulean. We don't want that. Um, we have a leaf green, we have Caribbean, and then we want forest. Okay. All right, forest green being the darkest, I think we will do first, and yeah, we'll do all these viney kind of things. I'm using the super fine nib on this part. So yeah, we should have a, oh, okay, dude, now that's going over there. So all the way around, you think, 
Yeah, I suppose I should do this dark green then. Kind of didn't want to do that because it's right next to the black, but oh well. It will be fine. Okay. And there's another pink I missed. Holy Hannah. I always have to miss something. Always, always. Just like my diamond paintings. I always miss some colors. Always, always. And then I just gotta go back and fill them in later. Just like I do in coloring. <laughs> All right, let's get this fine nib back out. Yeah, I like that with the blues. I think I'm going to do these in the dark green too. Because we're going to go with the lighter greens in these big swirlies. So I think we'll do the darker green in here. And then we can contrast it with a lighter color back behind. So I don't know if this video is going to end up as long as the previous one or if it's going to go a little faster. What time are we at? Oh, gosh, we're at 51 minutes. So, no, it's not going faster, but that's okay. I hear most of you guys like the long coloring chats anyhow, and you just get out your coloring and... Listen to me blabber on and on anyhow, so <laughs> that's what we're here for. We're here for your entertainment. I know I love listening to the long color in chats. That's why I love Anne's really long, like, you know, three hour color in chats. Because I'll just put her on and she's so hilarious anyhow. And... Put hers on and get out what I want to color and just color and listen to her. So hopefully that's what you are doing too while you are listening to this. And if you are, what are you coloring? And what are you coloring with? Oh my heavens, there's another one. <laughs> I think I missed more than I actually got. I must not have realized that this went with the flower. So let me check all the other ones. No, here's one too. <laughs> That's hilarious. Here's one. Yeah, I don't think I realized that it went with the flower itself. Because, yeah, every one I missed it on. So we'll just quickly get these colored in. And then I can continue on with the greens. Okay, those two have it colored in. I think I got them all. Who knows? We'll find out. Okay, we are back to the greens. Seems like I am ever complaining about the weather around here, ain't I? Ain't I? As my mother would always say, ain't ain't a word. But I think it is now in the dictionary, isn't it? Along with other slang type of terms that have now become so popular, like vlogging and things you never heard of a while ago. <laughs> Terms that some of the kids come up with. Oh, my heavens. But, yeah, the weather, again, starting tonight, is going to be quite nasty. Let's see. We will do these in here. We're supposed to get another five to eight inches of snow. I don't know how much more our roofs, 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 well, it's hoof and hooves, right? <laughs> or is it hoof and hoofs? Our roofs can withstand because it's getting pretty heavy up there. 
or meteorologist, I think it was yesterday, um, had a chart up um, during his weather segment, and it showed, I thought this was really interesting, how much weight, or I should say how many feet of snow your roof can withstand um, without caving in. <laughs> What an interesting subject, huh? Wouldn't think you'd have to worry about that type of thing. But uh, it kind of depended, of course, on... Oh, got to quick go back and do this one. On the, of course, the water content of that snow. And the fact that ice and things like that are much heavier than snow. And we have a good chance of getting sleet and ice tonight. So that is not a good thing. Definitely not a good thing. There were a number of pole sheds. And for those of you who don't know what a pole shed is, it is... Um, just a shed that is made out of metal siding. It does have a wood frame, but the sides are just, you know, a, a metal. They're not heavy duty sheds or anything. And then the roofs are just metal also. And there have been a number of those that have collapsed around the area. And unfortunately, some of those pole sheds housed animals, cattle, you know, things like that. Or, you know, they may just have their machinery in there. And there's been a lot of property damage. There have been cattle that have been lost. Um, or they've had to have them put down because they were injured so bad. I mean, I feel sorry for them. So yeah, people have been getting out and shoveling off their roofs. Um, we have not done it yet, or I should say Bob has not done it yet. <laughs> I think this I had green too, yeah. Um, it's just so hard to do. And um, he did buy a roof rake a few years ago and while you know you can do that it you know and you can reach up a ways <laughs> with that roof rake i'm trying to think what colors i'm going to do here um i think i'm going to do this in the very light green and then these no maybe i should do it the opposite because there's more black in here so we'll do the lightest green here See how much thought process I put into things. Uh, no more than anybody else, I know. Um, the roof rake only goes up so far. You know, you can only reach up so high, right? And so you are still only pulling the snow off the edge of your house. And that is not the most vulnerable place that your snow is affecting. The worst part is the center of your dwelling, whatever it may be. And so you actually have to get up on the roof to get that snow off. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. I knew I missed one here. See? Got to miss it again. And so, yeah, the snow has not come off the roof yet. And don't think it will anymore this winter. We actually had really nice weather yesterday. Got up nice and warm. And, of course, the sun is starting to get higher in the sky. So, it is getting warmer when it is out. And so, it actually started melting some of the snow yesterday. Yay! I had gone into town yesterday 
uh, early afternoon, had some running around to do and a dentist appointment with the infamous teeth cleaning, you know. And uh, there were such huge puddles, spots of water from, especially where there were huge, huge snow banks or like in the Walmart parking lot. Wow. They had the huge mountains of snow from when they plowed the parking lot, you know, when we had gotten all the snow. So now when there was melting yesterday, oh wow, there was tons of water, just pools of water down there. And it's kind of nice that we got some of the melting yesterday because everybody's worried about the flooding in spring if we don't have a slow thaw like a lot of times we don't we have the quicker thaw and oh yeah we're, we're gonna have a lot of flooding and the people down at the bottom of the hill where it's such low-lying area anyhow really have a problem because that's where the river runs through town is down there so that's not a good combination you know being in a low-lying area to begin with so all the water runs from the top of the hill up here down to the bottom down there and then the river is down there too so it's kind of double whammy and even if we don't get a ton of rain here, and the northern area does, well, what happens with the river, you know, the water eventually has to come down. So it eventually hits the river here in town too. And so we may still get flooding, even though we ourselves haven't gotten a ton of rain. So it's always something, right? I know you guys in the south have been getting tons of rain, too, where we've been getting all the snow. And I heard from one of my subscribers, who's a Brit, as she puts it. <laughs> um, she says it's been really rainy over there, too. So I think the weather just everywhere, not just the United States, I think this... This whole year, for this this winter anyhow, the winter months, whether you are in summer climate or winter climate, I think has just been really bizarre, really extreme this year. And I know some of that they blame on the El Nino. Um... Isn't there another one besides El Nino? What's the other one called? I can never remember because you hear of the El Nino so much. I can't remember what, I thought there was a second one. Because this is the one where the warmth comes up from, <laughs> which ocean is that on the California side? Pacific or Atlantic? But where the, the warm water comes up from warm water. The warm temps come up during an El Nino year and it can affect the weather so much worse. I think that's how it goes anyhow. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I am not a weatherman. I don't think I'd be too good at it. Oh, heavens, I have to tell you what happened to me last weekend. <laughs> uh, so I am making a batch of chili for Bob because he just loves chili. Now I can kind of, I think I'll color the light in over here too. I can kind of take it or leave it as far as chili. I'm not a huge chili person, but he loves chili. So in the winter months, Every few weeks, I make him a big batch of chili for him. 
So, yeah, I was making the chili. I had a couple pounds of hamburger in the frying pan and browning that. And when I have a bigger batch of something that I need to season with salt and pepper, I don't just take the shakers because it kind of takes a while to shake it out of there. So I just take the container of salt out of the cupboard and I just sprinkle some of that um, over the meat or whatever you're cooking. And so I don't use up all the salt in the salt shaker. And then the same is true with the pepper because otherwise you're shaking forever to get enough pepper out. I am typically not much of a pepper person, a pepper person. Um, so I typically don't add a lot anyhow. But what happened, and you can probably already figure where this is going. Yeah, salt went on just fine. I'm trying to think of colors here as I am talking. Um, well, as I'm talking, I'm going to just put light blue in the background. So I'll get the periwinkle out while I am yapping about this. <laughs> oh, periwinkle. Um, so anyhow, yeah, I open the container for the pepper and this particular container has three different sections. It's got the section to shake pepper out of. It's got the one with the hole in so you can fill your pepper shaker with it. And then it also has a, the whole lid flips up so that you can get a measuring spoon in there, I'm assuming, to measure out some pepper for a dish that you're making following a recipe. And so, I opened the part, let me get on screen here, opened the part where you shake out the pepper, right? And I'm shaking and, <laughs> yep, you guessed it, the big main compartment, the whole lid opened up and in went a whole crap load of pepper in my, on the hamburger. <sighs> I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do now? And Bob's in the other room like, what? I said, the whole top of the pepper container just opened up and dumped in the chili, on the hamburger. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I thought, well, Let's try to scoop off what I can, because there was a ton of pepper in there. And so I scooped off what I could, and I could see there was still a ton <laughs> on the hamburger itself. So I had to skim off a bunch of the hamburger, too, and get as much of that pepper out as I could because I didn't have any more hamburger to make this chili with so I had to try to salvage what I had. So there I am scooping out all the pepper out of the hamburger. Scooped out a bunch of the hamburger itself that was most filled with all of this pepper. Oh. I thought, okay, we're going to continue with it. Bob doesn't mind pepper anyhow. I am not, like I said, I'm not a pepper person. But but yet he complains when I put in too much. Well, I shouldn't say complain. Bob is not a complainer. But he'll say something if there's a lot of chili powder in the chili. <laughs> Go figure. Oh, I think I'll do light blue in the center here too. So, yeah, I scoop off as much as I can. I continue to make the chili and add, you know, the tomato soup, the, 
the kidney beans, the, you know, tomato sauce, everything that I put in my chili. Boil the noodles because, yes, here in Wisconsin, we put noodles in our chili. I know most people don't, but we do here. <laughs> and uh, dumped everything together. And I took a taste, and I'm like, ugh. Wowzers, that to me is very peppery. So I had Bob taste it, and he's like, no, that ain't real bad. <laughs> I said, oh, God, I said, my mouth is on fire. Oh, it ain't that bad. I said, okie dokie, if you don't say, if you don't think so, I said, this chili is more for you than it is for me, anyhow. So, we had some that night, and yeah, my mouth was burning. I had a piece of butter bread with it, and that kind of tamed it a little. And then, of course, after the first day, once you cool it off, your chili has a tendency of thickening, especially for those of us here in Wisconsin. I don't know if others put noodles, macaroni or spaghetti, whatever, in your chili. But with having that in the chili, of course, it thickens it up overnight. It finishes cooking the macaroni. So I added all the rest of the tomato juice in there and... Um, you know, and that helped to tame it down a little bit. <laughs> I think I'm going to use this light blue back in here, too. I'm going to make it more of the background around the outside. So, yeah, after I added the rest of the tomato juice, it tamed it down a little. I think I'll save them parts for what this is going to be. But to me, it was still pretty hot. So, yeah, that, uh, that was something else. But, you know, Jaden loves chili with his butter bread. So I thought, I am not going to mention this at all. And I'll just see if he says anything. <laughs> and when we had it on Monday for supper, he didn't say a word. He, you know, never mentioned it. He chowed down his chili like he normally does. And, yeah, never said a word. So, we had chili the majority of the week um you know we would have stuff with it and stuff it wasn't just chili but so there was a little bit left on thursday so we had the rest of it then and yes i made a big batch of chili uh. and uh, so then after he was done with it after jane was done with it on thursday I said, so, Jaden, did you think that chili was kind of spicy or hot at all? He goes, no, not really. <laughs> I said, okay. Because <laughs> he can be kind of a picky eater sometimes. But when it is something he loves, yeah, then there's there's not a problem. So, yeah, they all liked it. Even Maddie ate her chili and she typically is might like me and does not like hot things but yeah and she too she loves her butter bread so she would take her butter bread and dunk it in her chili and <laughs> just like we do and yeah she ate her chili pretty good which is sometimes hard to get a two-year-old to do at any point right Trying to get a two-year-old to do anything that you want them to do can not work a lot of the time, but she did pretty good with it. So yeah, that was my little excitement with the chili. I don't think I'm going to be using that big pepper shaker when I make scalloped potatoes today. <laughs> 
I would really cry if I screw them up. Oh, because scalloped potatoes is with the ham in is something I really love. Whereas, like I said, the chili, I could kind of take it or leave it, but I didn't want to, you know, have it absolutely horrible for Bob either. But like I said, he didn't really mind it. So took some to work and there's a piece of dark green that I again missed. So yeah, that was my excitement for last weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what do we want to do the square around here? What color? What color? Hmm. Do we want to go with I think we should maybe put some more purples or pinks in this maybe or Maybe yellow. Maybe we should get more of the yellow in here. Now, I think I'll do yellow in the background. How about a pale yellow background? Well, then I don't want to put yellow here. So, let's go, yeah, with a, a pink. How about a magenta or hot pink? I do have a color called Orchid. Maybe that would look nice. Let's try the orchid. Where are you? There we go. We'll see how this looks. I'm gonna get out the bigger nib. I am going to take a sip of soda quick. It's amazing how dry your mouth can get just from talking. Okay, we'll see what color this is going to come out as. It is, you know, more of a, almost a carnation pink or something, isn't it? I don't know if it's coming across on the screen the same way. Let me tip this way to color without having to flip the book on you guys. Yeah, Misty is just a snoring away over here. Wow. I don't suppose you can hear that, but yeah, she's back here. Oh no, now she moved over on the other side of the patio door here by me. And she's by the heater vent. Well, now this is actually part of this background, isn't it? This doesn't go all the way down. Okay. We will do that with the pale yellow. And I think I'm going to bring this color into the center then because there's a couple pieces and parts there that need to be colored yet too. Oh, Misty must have heard me talking about her, and she didn't like it. She got up and moved. <laughs> okay, Mom, if you like my snoring, I'll go snore in the other room. Oh, no, she had to go eat. She's crunching on her food now. Yeah, it took a long enough nap. Now I got to go eat. Then I'll have to go use the litter box. <laughs> oh. What goes in must come out, right? <laughs> At least that's the way it's supposed to work. Alrighty. I am getting this done faster than the previous picture. I think because there's a little bit more open areas, bigger areas to color that don't take quite so long. But that other picture, picture, that other picture just turned out so pretty. Yeah, this is a little bit brighter than what I thought it was going to be. But again, too late now. We will make it work and we will tie this color 
together in the middle. Okay, is that all of the areas? Okay, then we do have the center here, which will not be all yellow. I think we'll just color these. Uh, these, now that you can see what I'm doing, we'll color these areas the same color and try to tie the color in with the picture more. And, oh, that should have been that light blue. Boy, I am really doing good today, ain't I? Did I miss the other ones? No, I think I got them. So, yeah, we'll color this, and then we'll see if we can find a pale yellow to do the background with. Because there's just not enough yellow in this picture. Okay, because I think if I did it in this bright yellow, that would just be too bright and detract from the flowers. So let's see what pale yellow we have. Oh, I think this ivory would actually look nice. That's the lightest one. Or do you think we should go with lemon? Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm going to try the ivory. We'll see how that looks. And I'll just do a little bit, and if I don't like it, I will switch and go over the top with the other color. Let's see what this is going to look like. Blow on it to dry it. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a real pale shade. So, again, we don't detract from the flowers themselves. We just want a light, light background. So this shouldn't take long. With it being so light, you don't have to be super careful. Um around the darker colors. I mean, you still don't want to color over everything, but I usually, if it's a real pale color like this, I have a tendency of not being quite as careful. Maybe that's not a good thing because sometimes you can bleed your darker colors out then. Not as much as water-based things, but... It's con hopping. Now let's get down in this corner. You can see the paper, the cardstock that I have back behind <laughs> while the marker is wet. So that is that is not marks in the paper itself. <laughs> that is from the cardstock. A long yet. Not even an hour and a half, so yeah, not too bad. And I tell you, this one better be on my phone. Or it is Saturday, almost noon. If you hear a very loud noise in your area of the country, it was me. <laughs> Either I'm yelling, stomping, or the combination of the two. <laughs> oh, it's so fr I I love doing these videos and taking the time to do them. I really do. Love chatting with you guys. But, you know, a person has other things to do too. So I wanted to quick get a couple videos done this morning before I had to get some cleaning and 
start supper and all that stuff this afternoon. And so I thought by now I would have a couple of videos done, both my color and chat from this book and my diamond painting unboxing. But now I have one video made all morning. So, but again, it is what it is. Nothing I can do about it. It's still on screen here, not really. quiet. I must be running out of things to talk about. Down this way. See, I'm not, I have a real hard time getting the book over that far. I'll have to next time move my iPad over a little bit more. Oh no, right now I'm actually hitting the, the uh, thing that's attached to my desk that holds my iPhone up above to record. That's what I'm hitting. And I'm off again. Oh my heavens. Like I said, in the video that is no more, oh, I was so proud of myself for staying on screen for the entire picture. And now you guys are not going to believe me. But it is true. All right, what do you think? Let's zoom back out if it lets me know. I'll have to turn the remote back on before it's going to let me. There we go. Okay, accidentally hit the off button, so <laughs> I'm just starting again. Well, I'll just, I'll just splice these two pieces together. Instead of zooming out, I hit the center button and it stopped the recording. <laughs> Oh, I'm I'm betting a thousand today, aren't I? So what do you think? Did it turn out pretty? I think it did. I like how the pansies turned out, and I think the blue is a nice complement with the greens. And then I think that pale yellow really turned out nice. The background. Kind of hid in the back and still let the pretty flowers shine through. So I think we did okay on picking colors. What do you think? <laughs> Not sure if I really like this color in it. Um, it's just too contrasting to these. I don't know. I should have maybe went with the dark purple. Now that I look at it, maybe the dark purple would have been better, but oh well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this color and chat. I enjoyed chatting with you for this hour and a half. If you enjoyed this, please give me that thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and hit that bell so you know when I put out new videos. Again, I hope everybody is having a terrific weekend. And as always, happy coloring.